Hi everybody, it's day 112 and it's February 16th. I know that I did a vlog of my top 10 favorite um, TV shows a while back. And when I started to think about what my top 10 TV shows would be, I really, really struggled. I can't even narrow all the TV shows I watched down to 10. So I think I'm going to do two parts to this. It's going to end up probably being like my top 20 favorite TV shows. So I'm here to do a part two. I don't know if I have a full other 10. Um, as of right now, I think I have eight and I might be able to like throw in a ninth one. Um, so we'll see. I wrote them down so that I wouldn't get sidetracked and forget what I'm talking about, which happens a lot. All right. So like without further ado, let's get started. Part two of Miranda's top 10 favorite TV shows. All right. Number one, The Middle. I love the show. I am super bummed that it end, ended last spring. I was very excited to see the finale. I think it they wrapped it up perfectly. Like, I think, although it's sad that a TV show is ending, it's nice when a TV show knows when to end because there are definitely TV shows that are guilty of going on too long and then they ruin plot lines and characters and stories. And, you know, it's good to know when a good thing should end. So I think that The Middle did a perfect job at that. Like, the kids are getting old. It was time for them to wrap it up. Um, and they wrapped it up beautifully ended with grace. It was great. I loved the story because I found it so relatable. Like, they were a family that weren't particularly special, um, anything, and I just loved the relatableness of, um, the characters, and it's funny. It's really, it's really funny. So, I would definitely recommend The Middle. I liked it a lot. Um, great show. We always thought that my dad was kind of, like, the dad in the show because he hated to do, like, holidays and he hated to dress up and things like that and that's definitely my dad and then we would kind of suggest that my brother was like Brick the youngest boy which he's not anymore but when the show first started my brother was super like awkward such a bookworm and like was very like not good at social situations and that's like very much like Brick so we were a kid that like this is very similar to our family. Number two, How I Met Your Mother. So this is one of the shows like I absolutely loved, and then I think they took it too far. Um, so this is an example of a show that went on too long. <laughs> Should have been wrapped up like a few seasons earlier, because I don't think that the last few seasons were very good, and I don't like the ending. Anyway, the first like four or five seasons I love so much. Um, I like that like atmosphere of just like five friends hanging out in the bar in an apartment in New York and going on adventures, learning about themselves, learning about each other, growing. I, I liked it. I liked the premise. I, I found it very funny. I always loved when they sang songs like all the Robin Sparkle songs or like nothing suits me like a suit. So that was always entertaining and I really loved um, Lily and Marshall's relationship. They are definitely my like top 10 favorite. I should do this as a video but <laughs> if I were to do a top 10 favorite like fictional couples or like couples goals or whatever like they would be number one 100%. I look up to them. Um, they are a great example of how I want to have my marriage be someday. Alright, number three, The Big Bang Theory. Also, once again, a show that should have ended a while ago, in my opinion. I know they're on their last, uh, their last season, so I have been sticking with the show just so that I can find out what happens to the characters because I've been watching this show for a long time. Like, probably not when it first started because I was kind of young. Definitely by, like, season four, I think I was starting to watch it regularly. But I think the past few few seasons have been lackluster. I found it amusing and very, very funny, and I loved the characters, like, archetypes, I guess, and who they were, just, like, their quirkiness, and I thought it was fun because it wasn't a show that had been, like, done before. Um, so I found it unique to be just, like, some really awkward, nerdy dudes <laughs> hanging out, and I, I just, I liked it. It's one of those shows, kind of like Friends and um, Modern Family and arguably How I Met Your Mother was the same way. It's just one of those shows I've seen like all the episodes so many times I can just throw it on and it kind of feels homey and it still brings a smile to my face but it doesn't make me think much and I you know sometimes those shows are really good. <laughs> okay number four um 30 Rock. I love this show so much and it really bums me out because it's like it was on Netflix and then they got rid of it and I don't think it's on Hulu or Amazon Prime and they hardly ever put it on on demand or on TV and so it sucks ever since they like ended the show I don't really feel like I've been able to watch it and I love it it's so clever and 
it's such dry humor and it's it's just so funny and I think it's so underrepresented but she was nominated for so many Emmys for the show the show was nominated for so many Emmys and like it's just so good and it's so funny and clever uh, and that's a show that I don't think I've seen all the episodes too so like I really wish I had access to it because I would love to sit down and watch it from start to finish I love all the characters like Jenna and Tracy are just hilarious and I love Liz Lemon is just such a relatable character and then Kenneth is just so funny. Like, they're all so dynamic. Like, there's not one character that you're just like, eh, he's okay or she's okay. They're just so funny. All of them. So dynamic. Fantastic show. Number five, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. This show, I haven't seen all the episodes as well, um, but I'm working my way through them. I've, like, have seen several episodes from every season. Let's just say that. It's like, I feel like I know everything that happens, but I haven't like actually seen every episode, if that makes sense. And that's kind of, kind of how it is with 30 Rock as well. I like the show. It's it's silly. It's funny. Um, it brings me new laughs because it is a show that I haven't seen all the episodes for, so that's entertaining. And Andy Samberg is like one of my favorite actors. I love him in The Lonely Island, and he's just so funny. And he seems like a very like down-to-earth, like good person. And Terry Crews is, like, another really cool cool dude. He's, like, a super awesome gender equality advocate, and he, like, has really been outspoken about the Me Too movement, so I think he's a really cool dude. And I love the diversity that the show um, portrays, like, Rosa being bi, and Rosa and Amy are both women of color. Terry who, and Holt, who are both men of color. Oh, and, like, also Holt is gay, and, like, he's, like, in a position of power and I think that that's really cool and the show doesn't completely focus on the fact that he's gay because I think a lot of shows that have like people who are bi and gay like Rose and Holt are just like that's what the whole show is about or like they point it out all the time and they just like are like yeah it's a part of their identity so they don't ignore it but at the same time like that's not all of who they are they are human beings and I think that that's handled so well in the show all right, number six, SNL. Um, I love Saturday Night Live and find it super amazing and amusing and just in awe of the fact that they have kept this up for the past like 40 plus years. Lauren Michaels is like a genius and I think it's just, it's fun. Like if I had one shot at being an actor in this world, I would pick to be on SNL because I just think it would be so much fun. You'd get to play different characters every night. You would just get to be super silly and I think you'd bond so well. And like it's okay if you crack. Like I got to be in a one act play my senior year and it was a lot of improv with like a guided script as well. And like there were so many times when every night you just didn't know what was going to happen because things would just happen and we would just like be giggling and trying to keep a straight face but you'd look at your friend and they'd be smiling and laughing too and so it's just it's one of those like atmospheres so as like a fellow actor thespian whatever you want to call it watching that show I can just like imagine the kind of bond that they share with their castmates and um I don't know, it makes me happy just to kind of see that and I like that like as on top of it being silly it is political and I think that um, I hate that people who are like, SNL sucks now because it's all it is, because it's not. There are so many other skits. Plus, it has been political since day one. Back in the 70s, they were always being political. And so that's just not anything new. And I think it's okay to, ha like, have that um, platform to speak what you want and to make light of it. Like, honestly, like, that's where I get my news is Weekend Update. <laughs> um, I get my news from other sources. But, like, it's a better way to look at the at the news you know because it's it's a rough um political climate and it's kind of fun to just like find some humor in it and just be, be like yeah it's tough things are rough right now but like let's just poke fun at it a little bit and like put a smile on our face and I think that that's the whole point of what SNL has always been about it's just like you get done with your long week, there's a lot going on in your life and in the world, and here it is, Saturday night, and let's not think about it, let's just be silly and poke fun at things. And I think that they do an excellent job at that. Number seven, The Handmaid's Tale. I watch primarily comedic shows, if you can't tell, but I will occasionally walk, watch some drama. In my previous video, I talked about Stranger Things and Downton uh, Abbey as being like some dramas that I watch, and the only other drama for the most part I watch is uh, The Handmaid's Tale. And I'm so, so excited for season three. Oh my gosh. June 5th cannot come fast enough. 
although it will give me time to read the book. So <laughs> I've gotten the book. I'm going to sit down and read it, hopefully by June 5th. I really love the show because it just portrays some fierce, fierce women. Like June Osborne and Emily are just like badass women. And I love it. And I think it's a great warning for what could happen in this country and we need to be um, safe. <laughs> and it's terrifying. It's such a terrifying show in a different way than it is like a horror. The acting is amazing. Every episode ends in a cliffhanger so like it definitely does suck you in. <laughs> I watched them so fast. Definitely get your heart racing. Very captivating and it's just well made. It's amazing when in a book or in a movie when the writers and directors and whoever can really make you hate a character with a passion. This happened to me when I read Harry Potter and Professor Umbridge, you know, oh my god, I've never hated somebody as much as I hated Professor Umbridge. In The Handmaid's Tale, Serena did an excellent job of making me hate her so much. Like, yes, her husband Fred is a horrible man, and yes, all the other, like, officials of that place, I don't really remember what it's called, <laughs> are also just horrible people, but Serena, I don't know, it's just something that like, you know, how can she stand for that? Like I just would watch her and be like, you are letting your husband get away with raping a woman so that she can carry your child and then give it up to you and then be forced into just sex slavery and you're just letting standing by and letting it happen and treating her horrifically it's just it's kind of a sh one of those shocking realizations of like how can you not be on your own team and your own side here like how are you allowing this to happen serena definitely pushed my buttons in a way that like very few other characters ever have and that is the sign of such a fantastic show it's amazing her acting is fantastic the writing is fantastic it's, it's so well done. I am very much looking forward to season three. Number eight. So this is going to be controversial. <laughs> um, I bet you didn't think that something controversial was going to happen in a top 10 TV show list, but it is. I'm going to say The Cosby Show. Now, I love this show. This was my favorite show when I was 9, 10, 11 years old. I bought all the episodes and I had a Cosby Show t-shirt and I watched that show religiously just over and over and over again and I loved it. It was my everything. It, I, I loved the way the characters interacted. I loved the 80s aspect. I loved the clothing. I loved the humor. I loved that there were so many pregnant women on it because Dr. Huxtable was an OBGYN, so I love to see like the birthing stuff because that's obviously a passion of mine. It was just my everything, especially I was watching the show right before I moved, and so right after I moved, I just clung to it. Like I didn't have anything else tying me back to home, and so this was something that I had back in Indiana, and so this was something I also had in Colorado, and I just I clung to it. And I went and saw Bill Cosby twice in show um, when I was like 14 and 15 years old that he came to Northern Colorado and I went and saw his performances. And then a couple years later, obviously, word got out about the horrible things that he has done to women. He is a bad man. And that's just really shitty. To see somebody that I really admired and loved his work and loved his writing and the show and his stand-up to, to just learn that like I was adoring a man who raped over 40 over 50 women real shitty real shitty and I felt guilty like I could never watch the show again like how would I how could I ever do that and I was grateful and happy to know that he was convicted and he is going to spend the rest of his life behind bars because a lot of times that sort of thing goes unnoticed and like that's just the culture that we live in, that people who rape and assault just don't normally get jail time. And if they do, it's like three months. So I was very happy to know that the women are finally getting justice after several, several years, decades, you know. Um, 
I am happy about that. And at the same time, it was just really difficult to see, like, one of my favorite shows just be, like, tarnished. And I was just sitting there like, oh, my God. Like, how how do I personally deal with this? My freshman year in college, I just I, – I was having trouble watching TV because of internet stuff. Like, it would pause every few seconds, so I needed, like, a DVD thing to watch. And the only case set of – you know, TV that I had was The Cosby Show, and so I had, it had been years since I'd watched it because of all what happened, and I was like, you know what, I kind of want to watch it, and I'm alone in my dorm, and I'm sad, and I'm scared, and I'm stressed out, and I'm going to watch it, and I kind of, like, thought about it, and I was like, you know, I'm not supporting him, because I've already bought this, <laughs> and he's in jail, and this is not showing any support. I can support the other actors who are in the show, and I can support the storytelling. And I look at it like, Dr. Huxtable is a character, you know, and he is being portrayed by a very bad man. But he's a character. And so I felt better about watching it when I under kind of realized that, like, this is fictional. I don't support him. I've already bought this. This money is not going towards him in any way. He's in jail. And this is a show that I have loved long before understanding this or hearing of this. And so I had to, I had to think about this and really contemplate whether or not that was okay. Um, and I came to the terms that it was to um, still appreciate the show for what it is. Because, you know, Theo Huxtable is fine. Like, I had a major crush on him. Rudy is so funny in her relationship with Bud or Kenny. And Claire Huxtable is, like, a beast. Like, man, she's a fierce woman who is smart and educated and can stand up for herself and others. And I love that. And, you know, I, Sandra was, like, my favorite character. I just really looked up to her. And I loved Denise's funky style as well as Vanessa's funky style. And just... You know, I could look at these other characters and I'm like, wow, I love it. And this reminds me of being a kid and it brings me a nostalgic feeling and that's okay. So that was a hard thing to come to terms with. <laughs> Maybe controversial because I don't support him, but the TV show is still one of my favorites. I don't really have a 9 or a 10 for this list, honestly. Um, obviously, I've just like talked about 18 TV shows that I like and watch a lot. I don't know. There's several other shows, but none of them feel like they deserve a spot on the list. They're like, yeah, those are good shows. They're cool. They're not. They're not list worthy. I guess you. Should, I guess I could say. Anyway, um, that's that. <laughs> and I hope you all enjoyed this video. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow.